How's it going, internets? I hope you're having a wonderful and amazing day. It is time, very late, but still time for the best part of my day. Hopefully a good part of yours as well. It's time to do some animation. It's time to look into animation. It's time to get inspired and it's time to practice and play with this amazing and wonderful art form. In the corner over there, I have um, a little Bill Titla, one of the um, amazing Disney founding animators, um, a little shot from Pinocchio that I found on YouTube. Uh, it's a shot of Stromboli, it's a little pencil test. Um, but for today's inspiration, I um, thought I would read you a little thing from The Illusion of Life, and it's based on um, some stuff from Bill Titla. So I figured I'd give you a frame of reference of some of his amazing animation, which we have in the corner over there, which is a hard angle to do with my hand and my elbow. So anyways, um, this is from The Illusion of Life. Beautiful Disney book. This is the page I'm looking at if you want to see some of the great, amazing art that's in this book. Okay, so let me just read a little excerpt for today's inspiration. Not every aspect of Bill's animation can be properly analyzed, for his thinking was complicated and involved. However, it is interesting and enlightening to list the components that are found in Bill's work. In his best animation, they are all there. It takes steady concentration to have this knowledge and skill at your fingertips and be able to use it right. Like a baseball pitcher who has that momentary lapse and gives up a home run, the animator can get himself into a hopeless situation through lack of concentration. This list of components in good animation is quite an imposing group to combine in any scene. Any one element on the list is a challenge to even the best animators. And then he gives his list, um, and they are inner feelings and emotions, acting with clear and definite action, character and personality, thought process through expression changes, ability to analyze, clear staging, good composition, timing, solid drawing, power in drawing, strength in movement, and imagination. Anyways, I thought those were awesome. Um, kind of uh, Bill Titla. I think it's Titla, not Titla. If you know, leave me a note in the comments below. Um, but kind of what his principles for his animation were. Um, so yeah, definitely, if you don't have a copy of The Illusion of Life, get it. I will leave a link to Stromboli Pencil Test that's over there in the comments below. I'll leave a link to the book. Again, I'm not affiliated or anything, just telling you, if you're starting animation or you're into illustration or drawing, grab a copy of The Illusion of Life. Do it. It's great. It has so many great stories in it, too. Um, not even just instructional stuff, but just stories about you know how they built this um, empire on animation. Okay, so anyways, um, this is a robot rig that I got off of Creative Crash. It's a free rig. You can grab yourself um, this rig if you want. Uh, I'm just going to pause this guy here and close that out. Okay, make sure we're still recording, and we are. Um, this is my 2014. Again, uh, these newer rigs that I'm grabbing aren't working with 2010, which is a version that at least for uh, when I'm recording I like to use that um, especially yesterday we had some technical difficulties that's for sure um, but I think that's important as well to show I was thinking about you know deleting the whole thing and not bothering putting it up um, but I think it's important especially with CG animation to really uh, show the process and how it works and how sometimes the thing with CG, at least when you're starting out or when you're first learning, but I, I gotta think even super experienced animators have days like this where just the computer's laggy or the program's crashing or they get a different add-on or um, something that just isn't working right or the character rig breaks or it doesn't have the controllers it needs and all this stuff and to just continue to persevere through it, push through it and try to at least get something out of it even if it's maybe not what you had originally planned or wanted out of it, I think there's an important um, lesson in both in life and in animation with just sticking with it and trying to um, to not get frustrated and everything too. So that's why I put that up there uh, yesterday. So uh, again, it wasn't my favorite thing that I've done at all, but I think it's an important thing as an animator to be able to you know put your stamp on it and even though it might not be 100% the best there's going to be days where 
it's kind of a little bit out of your control, even with a creative and imaginative mind. Um, so don't worry if you're having days like that. You got somebody else in your camp fighting for you. Keep going. Keep trying. So anyways, enough of me blabbering. Let's get into this rig again. All the information that I have talked about so far will be linked in the comments below, along with a couple other um, resources that I really like and were good for um, helping that I use quite often still um, for starting out animation. So for this guy, I was kind of thinking, uh, let's cut it down to 48 frames just because that's about how much animation I like to do, trying to keep it. Um, if you're not familiar with kind of this little animation time series, usually starts off, we'll do a little bit of inspiration in the beginning, talk about um, either a concept or an idea or an image or a little short animation or something just to, to get inspired or to, thought, to think about or to have them mulling around in your head um, to try to inspire different um, creativity or a, a different thought process or workflow or something that, that might not be prevalent in your everyday uh, workings or just something to remind yourself of old things anyways. And then we get in and we try and do a little bit of animation with the current stuff that I've been um, that we've been doing here on the channel. Uh, we're taking a rig. I've never used this rig before. I know next to nothing about it. It's a, it's a free rig so anyone can grab it. And uh, we get in there, play around with it for about, uh, try to keep these around an hour. Seems like a couple of them have gone a little bit longer. Um, nothing's really gone, I think, under 59 minutes yet. Um, I think that was the, the quickest I was able to put something up. But with this guy, I was thinking what we could do is kind of for the first um, bit, we could go forward. Ooh, it's going to be fun. Go forward and then back and then forward. Watch. Okay, we got to be careful. Where's the... Uh, and that moving further. Okay. So let's get this just going. Do I have to do that there? Is this not aligned? Interesting. we could do it this way. That doesn't really change too much. Okay, so we'll go uh, set a key on one, and we'll pull it forward, and then backward, kind of like a little rev up, and then we'll really roll it forward. So that should give us a... Ooh, or more. What? Like one? Kind of a little bit of a like anticipation stutter, and then go for it. It's kind of the idea that I was thinking when I first saw this rig. So we'll see if we can get that polished and looking good here. It's kind of strange that uh, how it's laid out, but that's all right. Doesn't change too much here. Oh, you know what? Before we get in there, let's get ourselves a, a better starting pose. So let's uh, grab this little arm. It's a really cute rig. I do like it, and aside from the hips kind of being strange that they don't like kind of align with each other, uh, but that's okay. We can just use the uh, main controller, the global controller or whatever here. That's all right. And that rig that we used yesterday was a really cute rig, but it was definitely more of a frustrating rig than uh, I had anticipated, that's for sure, with that one. But that's okay. It's all right. Not every... Um, and by the way, if you're still kind of new to animation and you're just checking this out and you're watching this video, a rig is um, just like an animated character. You just call it uh, rigging, with, and that's basically taking like my elbow and giving it a controller so that you can manipulate the elbow and keeping that kind of like a skeletal structure underneath um, the character as well. Just a little bit. Let's see, I'll use the fingers. Yeah, I guess drag is just fine. It's 
a real cute rig, that's for sure. I do like this guy. We just want to get a good starting pose. It's definitely a good way to uh, a better pose, something with a little more life to it. It's going to give us better animation overall. It's a good pose to start, that's for sure. And we got the basic idea that we want for this one. Thought rather than do uh, try and figure out a way to walk, we'll have him really roll. <laughs> and of course, it ha doesn't have legs or feet, so that's uh, kind of a good place to start. Rotate that forward a little bit, and we'll rotate that back a little bit. And then I think we'll swing the arms back just so they're kind of hanging. And what do you think? Should we? I mean, I don't think so, right? Or we can flop the antenna side to side. That's kind of cool. Bend the orientation point doesn't seem to be doing as much as I would Oh, there we go. We can set it at uh, 90. And that should allow us to give a forward and backward bend. Let's get some better eyebrows in here. And the eyebrow, you do want to kind of keep a nice curve to them if you can. So they kind of work as a single unit. Hi, baby. We got uh, babysitting, cat sitting a new little kitty today, so that was kind of one of the reasons why today's video was a little bit later, but that's okay. It's really cute. If she ends up sneaking over here again, I'll grab her and you guys can say hi. Okay, let's see. So we can make them bigger pupils. Uh, tiny? Yeah, let's go with tiny ones. What's this cog do? It can be here. Oh, we can add a little bit of that. And what about the wheels? What can we do with the wheels? Let's not worry about that too much just yet. So we'll go ahead and save what we have, just hit Control S. I already saved the file a little bit before that. And go ahead and grab everything I want and set a key. Rotate it forward a little more. Rotate that back a little more so it'll go. Having fun, little babies? Hmm? And rotate that. And we'll rotate that forward. And push it forward a little bit. Maybe even raise it up a little bit there. Keep sneaking over here, trying to say hi to everybody. And maybe rotate that guy.
squish him down there. Okay, let's kind of see how that's playing out. I think the basic idea is there. Approach this one a little bit different. So we're gonna grab where we're at at three and hold that to six. Move it where we have a fifteen and hold that to eighteen. I think we're gonna have a twenty-seven and move that to like thirty-two. And we'll take thirty-six and move it to like forty. Thirty-six and we're just kind of what we're doing is we're setting up um, like kind of our slow in and our slow outs here um, by favoring um, different keys it'll set us up and we'll go back in and we'll I'm sure we'll delete a bunch I feel like um, the end kind of works for me maybe not so fast and this beginning is a little too jerky so probably do this to like seven and put it at five. Take eleven and delete twelve. And now we're just kind of um, taking what would be kind of the the key right before our main key and making that our new key so that way there's a little bit more of a smoother transition. And then we'll have to spend a little more time today than we usually do polishing up um, our graph editor a bit more. But I think this approach, rather than kind of the layered approach that I usually um, uh, follow, where it's like, let's do the hips first, then the, or the feet first, and then the hips, and then once we have the hips and the feet working okay, then go into the chest, and then once you get the chest go, then go into the arms, and then into the head, and then go back and kind of just repolish and retweak it away. This way is more of the, um, instead of the straight ahead method, it's more of the like pose to pose, where we got a couple of our initial we really want this kind of a movement, we want this kind of a movement, and we got in there, and we've got to put a couple of breakdowns in there, and then we're going in and we're going to go from there. And I think for this approach, or for this shot, that's going to be kind of a better workflow. But it really depends on whatever, you know, each shot you got to treat a little bit differently. So there's just not, it just holds too much there. So we gotta take our 23 and make that our new 24. And maybe we'll take 33 and we'll put it at like 31. That'll give us an extra frame. seems like too much movement now. So we'll take 28 and we'll make that our new 30. And again, we'll go back in and we'll clean up the graph editor and then we'll mix it up and we'll add some arm movements. We'll add some overlap in that uh, little antenna on the head as well. And we'll do some um, delay and overlap on the, like, I don't know what you call it, the chest, the head. We'll do it more so it'll uh, be delayed a couple of frames. Take what I have more at like 34 and make that 30. But the thing is, I don't want the translate to be like that. So we'll go into the graph editor. Hopefully, that's the uh, translate C if we did it again right. And we want to hold that and then go back. That's fine. I think 
gonna take it and we can have it 31 and make that our new 30 and then let's see we have at 27 and make that our new 23 but we want to pull the translates on these guys back a little bit more Accentuated the translate back a little too much, so let's go ahead and check that out. trying to fix the um I feel like the chest doesn't need to spend so much time doing that it should be closer together That still feels a little, maybe it could be a little more of a shoot out. It feels like it's slowing out a little too fast, and it's okay to have some of that. Like this is okay, but then I want it to feel like it's shooting. So a little slow and then forward. So let's go ahead and watch it. I feel like this is too quick in there because we changed the posing and made it a little more extreme. I feel like we need an extra frame to get into it. So where can we steal that frame from? I guess we could steal it from the other side here. Let's go ahead and grab everything and give us one more frame. We need to do another we're gonna take the rotate X and we'll key on there and give us an extra frame or two to get in there so it's a little more ease in to that uh, crouched position. Now we need 
to take that and move it back about two frames so we still have that nice um, and we will ease out of this a little bit more so we'll key that and we're going to push that back to three let's try one time This way, and then we'll go ahead and take this and we'll drag it forward a little bit so that'll give us a little drag. smooth that out a little bit more, but I think that idea will work. Let's go ahead and grab, let's see if the arms work together. Oh, let's go ahead and save our scene so far, see what we're doing here. Okay, and let's go ahead and drag them back. Oops, no, drag them back. No, they're not going to work together. Oh, well, that's okay. It's going to be rotated back a little bit because it just went forward. And it's going to swing.
just a little bit. One second here, and I'll be right back. Okay, sorry about that. Now, where were we? Working on the hands. Okay. We still want to just sort of pour a little more there. Probably only about. This needs to be further back. Until about this point, it's fine. And it'll help if we, when we get into animating the a breaking of joints with the elbow and the wrist. We just want to get this nailed down first. Move it forward. Okay. Okay. Still feels like that should be back further. It works, but it's too much bounce there. And that needs to be about two frames sooner. One, two. And that needs to be scaled down quite a bit. Just want a little bit of uh, kind of a sway there. Forward, 
PS for a little bit maybe then for next stream and then it starts going to bed again. We could just leave it and see if it actually does that. That would work. Keep it simple. One of the good tips in animation is just not working. Keep it simple. It wasn't necessary. Selected, key selected, <laughs> key selected, key selected. Just gonna try to mimic that same movement, and I think we'll offset it by a frame or two. Bear with me one second here. Okay, sorry about that. Let's get back into it. We're going to do the other arm now, too. So we'll just redo. So we'll go ahead and pull that back. And we're just trying to uh, kind of... This is the curve that we had from the other one. So we just kind of want to do similar. Not exactly the same. But kind of mimic that curve to the other side and that should give us what we're looking for. I'm sure we'll have to play with it as well, but this will give us a good starting spot to go back from. It's kind of like a reverse curve, so let's see. Let's see if we did that right. If we did, it should play. Let's go ahead and look at this guy now. Let it pull back. And then pull it forward. And put it kind of hanging down on the line there. Let's see how we do with that. And I think there's going to be a couple leftover keys from what we were doing before. So we got to be mindful of those. Like this one. We don't really need that key. We may want it to swing forward. swing there, 
still in the back and then it will swing forward just a little bit. Now let's go ahead and watch that. Feels like it's a little too late on this movement. Let's go ahead and move everything forward a frame. still be back with the nail there. Okay, so. I think we want to leave it. I felt like it was translating too much. Go ahead and save what we have again. And let's grab this one and the other one, and we'll try to mimic that same curve. So we want to key that frame. the next one. It's good to, I, I don't like having super, superfluous or extra keys that I don't need to. Um, okay. Well then let's go and see if we can mimic that curve on the other side. So where it goes up, the other one will go down. See how we do on that other arm. Let's see. Okay, one second. Okay, sorry about that. Let's go ahead and check this arm again, see if we got it working. This arm feels like it shouldn't be as far behind as it is, so let's go ahead and see. I think that might be there. I think we could maybe roll the baby forward a little more. Okay, let's go ahead and see that. See, it seems to go back too fast. Well, let's do the let's do the hands before we worry about that too much. Save off what we have. Let's go ahead and we're gonna key those on the same frame as uh, the arm, and then we'll go ahead and. Selected. Key that guy here and key selected. Delete that extra frame. Go here and then key selected. Now this is definitely a different approach to doing shots than I usually do on these. This is kind of how I'm more I approach um, 
like animating a scene is kind of get a feel for what I want to do with it, get kind of the timing working, and get a, get a basic pose working, and then I tend to push the poses once I have the main body mechanics working on a uh, more like a production shot or a little short or something. That other arm is just distracting me. That should not be pulling back so fast. Let's just keep going with what we have. Let's go about two frames back. So it delayed a couple of frames. Rotate that up a little bit.
can get a little bit in the fingers as well. And then we'll go to the other side here. I just want to get some nice overlap and drag in those fingers. Let's get into the hand on this side. Go ahead and save what we have. Alright. Try to grab this one. Try to grab this guy. really cute rig and I feel like this one has some real nice controls and everything like that. It's a little different to work with but also just because I'm kind of working in a little bit different style than I usually do. Okay, now we're just gonna grab the rotate lines and then try to do the opposite and mimic that curve that we had before. Over 
see how we're doing. Let's see if that works. Alright, we'll just let someone forget what we had on the roof. Okay. We'll go ahead and save what we have here. Let's go into these fingers here. I'm gonna want to not have these look so similar, so we're gonna have to play with the timing of the either. So one will lead and one will follow, or vice versa. Okay. And now that we did the grass over here. Good way to get our basic information that we need down here. Got some project runway going on in the background if you hear that. Alright, I guess that's the thing we're doing today. Need some time. See how these fingers work. One second here. And I'm going. Getting a lot of pausing today. Sorry about that. Okay, now let's go ahead and grab the kind of, uh, not the index finger, but the other fingers. And we'll go ahead and we'll delay those a frame. And we'll go ahead and take the index finger. Go ahead and uh, have those lead by a frame and see how that works. Just doing a little bit on the thumb here.
side. So we're just going to kind of mimic those frames here that we have. So I want to make sure we got a key there. Build tight with that. That's some cool stuff. I love, love me some Stromboli. He's such a cool character from Pinocchio. Those nine old men. If you haven't studied them, they have some. I mean, that's uh, that's some real talent there. Okay. I know. What am I saying? Of course, you guys know this. You guys are all geniuses that are watching this channel and amazing animators already. So um, what am I even saying? that frame here. Sorry to bring that up there so make sure that I'm doing a better job. Getting in there so you guys can see what I'm doing. Sharing videos and doing stuff and I'm really talking about this stuff I guess. Uh, one thing I was kind of going to talk about today while I was working was uh, like obstacles and kind of the importance of Finding what your passion is and not letting anything get in the way. Okay, let's go ahead and save everything that we have, and now let's try to um, offset the wrists and the arms and everything so that they're not working on the same frame that everything else is. So I'll go ahead and lead with that one, and let's just see if that's enough. yeah that you know whatever it is that you guys are into or want to do for life you know don't let things get in the way if there's something that you want to do then by golly go do it I'm going to re-grab these because I think I did the same thing. I think I just moved them so they were on the same frame. It's not great. Okay, so we're going to grab everything we have here. We're going to move it forward frame. And then we're going to grab everything on this one and move it back frame. That way there's like a two frame buffer between the two and that should mix up the movement enough so that they don't feel like they're going at the same time. Accentuate the, um, the elbow on one and the wrist on another. You just want to do something so that they're not so samey with the movements, even though the feeling you want it to be the same. And let's take the spread on the index. I'm going to amp that up on this side. I'm going to take the spread on the other side. We'll amp that up just to add some more variety between the two movements. Okay, let's go see if that was kind of enough here.
this front movement feels like it's too far. Let's go ahead and save off what we have again and see if we can do a little animation in this little antenna here. So we'll have it bend back there. And bend forward there. And bend back there. And bend way back there. And then flip the lid. Let's go ahead and delete all the middle stuff. Okay, and then we're gonna have to probably favor some. Okay, so we'll do that. Do that forward one, two. Do that one, two. side a little bit more. I think I'll delay it about two frames, maybe two. I just want to add a little bit of overlap on that so make sure that we're doing it on the right frames and that we're having the right posing and it's not too much. I want to be careful about having that move completely to focus or anything. Okay, the beginning's kind of working. I'm going to want to hold that for about one, two, three more frames. Maybe even two more than that. Watch that now. I think we'll not do it as extreme and then hold it for another frame. So it holds a little bit later. And then we want to hold that, I think, one more frame over before it starts going.
this extreme thing. Sometimes it's not about the timing, it's about how much or the spacing of it. Sometimes it's not about the timing of the movement so much. Um, and by adding an extra frame or deleting a frame isn't what you need to do. What you need to do is go in and retweak the pose to have it be less extreme or less subtle. And that'll fix the issue with the amount of, uh, with the animation versus messing with the time. Let me try and give you an example of this since I'm talking about it. Um, let's say I'm going uh, from here to here. And that's what I'm doing, and it's way too fast. So what I could do is just add a couple more frames in between it, but what I probably should do is redo the spacing for more like a slow in or slow out, or just redo the extreme, because I could do in the same time it would take me to go here to here, I could go here to here, and then that would be a little bit faster. So kind of tweaking your spacing, the distance between the two things, or the posing itself, I could add a smear frame in between, so I could go with uh, swiping my wrist that way versus that and changing up the posing would allow that move to be clearer. So you have to look at things a couple different ways. You have to look at the posing, you have to look at the spacing, which is the um, area on your camera that the pose takes place at, and then the timing, which is the time at which the, the pose is being held for. So it's kind of a little bit of a, a tricky thing to get your mind around right away. Um, but definitely, you know, look into that as well for when you're doing it or consider doing, you know, not necessarily tweaking just the timing of a movement if it's not working, but the posing and the spacing as well. You might need to t tone down the pose a little bit more or you might need to play with when the pose occurs both in space and in time. and save what we have in here. And I think I'm getting to where I like this thing. Let me see if I can do this uh, auto rotation thing. Let's see. Let's try to get maybe a little bit of drag we could do in this little cog thing so it could go. Let's get rid of the translate Y's. We didn't really want to keep those. Let's go ahead and put that back at zero. And we don't want to do too much on this little cog thing, but just a little bit to give us a little more life in here. And have it kind of lead the movement there. a little bit of kind of ripple there. Maybe one other thing we could do would be to um, kind of squash Just add a little bit more. 
more squash and stretch on that upward vert. Don't be afraid to use sound effects. I'm telling you, it'll help with your timing. It'll help with the movement. Here you go. Yeah, see, it's fun. That's your. It'll help you learn timing. I'm telling you, you might sound goofy. People might think you're you're nutty, but do it. I'm telling you, for for me at least, adding my own sound effects is a good thing to get down your timing. If you can make the sound effect for it, then it's probably doing pretty good in timing. Hmm, maybe we could do a little bit of. Uh, Say out from that when it's going forward. So like, ooh. Maybe just get a little bit. Little too late though. Maybe one frame sooner. Hey. Okay. I do feel like the bend, this bend, is not enough. That bend forward. I don't want to do too much though. Just trying to get a little more bend in this front flop down so it doesn't kind of rock as much. So we can hold that bend in a little bit more. Let's see if that's. Just feel like there should be a little more movement in that first thing. All right. I think that's a pretty good place to call it for today. I really like this rig. I thought this was a really fun rig. It's a very cute rig. There's plenty of stuff we could do with the facial, give him some eyebrows and everything too, but I think for what we've got, it's already pretty late tonight, and it's, I'm sure this video's gone on for at least an hour, if not more. Um, so I really appreciate you guys watching. If you do enjoy this series, remember to throw me some thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, 
you know, share it with your friends. If you have ideas or things that you'd like to see on the channel, definitely leave them in the comments below. If there's things that you think I could tweak up or play more or anything, or you've got any sort of, you know, comments, crits, whatever, um, definitely throw them down below. I'm happy to know um, what you're thinking and what you guys uh, are enjoying in animation these days too. If you have shots that you're working on, feel free to share them with me. I'm happy to give you an extra set of eyes on there. But overall, you know, just keep in uh, in mind that stuff that we talked about in the beginning. And I'll just go ahead and read through that list of awesome um, Bill Taitla uh, uh, kind of principles to make sure that you include in your animation. And those were uh, inner feelings and emotion, acting with clear and definite action, character and personality, thought process through expression changes, ability to analyze, clear staging, good composition, timing, solid drawing, power in drawing, strength in movement, and imagination. And I think we've got uh, a few of those working pretty well here. We got definitely, you know, our anticipation. We got a little bit of squash and stretch in there. We've got some overlap and drag. Um, and we got some cute posing. That's a nice little, pretty strong pose. Um, probably if I was going to end it, I would drag that little antenna back, but it's still got some overlap. That would probably be about another three or four frames at least for it to settle back um, but, but it's definitely a cute rig we could uh, you know like I said we could definitely spend some time really getting into that face and doing some really fun stuff with the face but we did add a little bit of uh, overlap and expression on the eyes as it um, goes forward and then pulls back uh, so I will leave um, all the stuff in the comments below and I'm just rambling now I should really tell you guys that I appreciate you and I love you. You guys are awesome and keep on working hard every day. Keep inspiring yourself. Keep pushing yourself. Keep trying no matter what, no matter what happens. Don't give up. You can do it. You're amazing. And I will see you